Hello everyone, my name is Griffin and we are back with another reaction video. We are reacting to another one of, um, her name slips my mind. <laughs> well, nothing's- Her name slips my mind. Brett Cooper, that's right. <laughs> I had a brain fart there, I couldn't fucking think of her name. We're reacting to another one of Brett Cooper's videos. This one is called This Is Madness. I have no idea what this is about, so let's see what's going on, shall we? Well, nothing screams Democratic National Convention like abortion food trucks, blown up contraceptive items, and Palestinian flags everywhere. But huh? I'm 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 sorry. I need to hear that again. Well, nothing screams Democratic National Convention like abortion food trucks. <sighs> what? Huh? I'm 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 sorry. I'm sorry. I s abortion food trucks. I swear to god every year we are dipping further and further into madness as a fucking society. Abortion food trucks really? What the fuck is wrong with you people? Trucks blown up contraceptive item Okay, the, the, <laughs> this, this, okay, this is just hilarious. This is just funny. And Palestinian flags. I, I really got nothing to say about the Palestinian Israel thing. I have no idea what's going on. I don't care what's to, to know what's going on. If it, if something does not affect how I go about my daily life, if it doesn't affect me, my loved ones or anyone that I care for and doesn't obstruct my life, how I go about my daily life, how I live my life. I don't care. It, I, you know, it sucks that whatever is going on over there for some people, it doesn't suck for others. I hope whatever is going on ends soon and peace can return to the world, but I just don't care. Everywhere, but welcome to the DNC. 2024. We need to dive into this and give you a recap of what's been going on. But before we do, make sure that you like this video, subscribe to the comment section channel if you have not already, and ring that notification bell so that you never miss one of our episodes. All right, so in full transparency, I was expecting the DNC to really pull out all the stops. Like I was expecting to see Beyonce and A-list celebrities and huge performers like from the get-go. I thought that they were going to be like opening the whole show because the world is ending, Trump might get elected. They all have Trump derangement syndrome. That is what I was anticipating. The hell is a DNC? But to my surprise, that is far from what actually happened. Perhaps the fact that flaunting the likes of Lady Gaga back in 2016 really backfired on them. But this year, they started day one off with a couple country singers named Jason Isbell and Mickey mm -hmm. Guyton. And to be completely fair, I have no idea who they are. I have loved country music. I love country music. I've been listening to it uh, since I was still in diapers. I mean, the first song I ever listened to or heard was um george Strait's song fireman and i've been listening to country for almost 30 years i've never heard of those two artists dick for basically as long as i've been able to listen to music and understand what i've been listening to and i literally had never heard of these people before. But guys, bringing these two people was all very strategic. Rolling Stone wrote about this and said, Jason Isbell, camo hats, and the DNC. The Democrats finally embraced country music with a few key signifiers. Okay, what the fuck is... Hey Siri, what is the DNC? The Democratic National Committee. Thank you. I have no idea what the fuck the Democratic National Committee is about, but whatever. Fires, the party is aiming to reclaim the rural and southern identity that it has long ignored. I mean, I wouldn't really say that you've ignored your rural country southern identity. I would say that you have utterly shat on it for years. You have made rural and country people out to be ignorant, like they're backwards, like they're racist. So no wonder they all left. No, I feel so deliciously white trash. You, you know... The one thing I don't think I will ever sorry, I'm I, I didn't get much sleep last night. Um so I'll probably be yawning a lot in this video. The one thing I don't understand, I, I I will I don't think I will ever understand this is how 
people can like idolize or deify anything or anyone in politics. I don't understand it. I don't understand why people do that. And I can see why people get so fucking upset in politics because they have idolized or deified the shit and people in politics. They, they are so fervently opposed to what they believe in politics. They, they're, they're just so engrossed in what they believe that whatever goes against it is like them being shot in the foot. It'll hurt them. It's, it's just politics. People calm the fuck down. You, nobody should be idolizing or deifying anything or anyone in politics. That is probably the worst thing you can do when it comes to politics. Just, you know, go with what you believe is right in the view that the politics are going or whatever, but don't deify or, or idolize anything. That That is a quick way to stress the ever-living fuck out of yourself. And the other thing people don't understand when it comes to politics and debating all this stuff is it is okay if someone or something disagrees with your view. It is not the end of the world. It doesn't mean the person is evil or bad. There, there are family members I have that don't see the same way I do when it comes to stuff, politics, and other things. And I'm still on friendly terms with them. I still love them. They're my family. It's just they don't have the same views as I do, which is fine. There are other people who don't have the same political views that I do, and I'm perfectly fine with that. I just, I the only thing I care about is if they are respectful and if they have a good character. If something or someone disagrees with you or your worldview or whatever view or opinion you have, it does not mean that you have to fight them every inch of the fucking way. I went off on a tangent there, but let's get back to the video. You didn't ignore them. You actively went against them. No wonder they turned against you. But now, apparently, you want them back. <laughs> Perhaps the Democrats realize that being super anti-American is not a great strategy when you are running in an American election. So to fix this, they quickly rounded up some liberal country musicians to bring back an Americana feel. But sorry guys, the days of the blue dog Democrat are over. You are not the working class party anymore. You lost all of that no matter how many times you talk about how you hate how rich Donald Trump is. A lot of you guys are just as rich as he is. So shut up. Also, this whole thing cracks me up because country music is definitely cool. Again, I mean, Lenny Wilson just released a song. I think it's called like country's cool again or whatever. I don't know. It is like for years, I would get so much hate from my friends for loving country. Again, they were like, oh, you're the backwards girl from Tennessee. You love Florida Georgia Line. Yeah, bred at 10 years old. Love Florida Georgia Line. I still think Florida Georgia Line is super fun. I mean, but like this year, guys, sorry, I'm ranting, but this year Post Malone and Beyonce have released country albums. Like, I can sort of, okay. Now, uh, I'm sorry. I can't see them as country. I can't. I I, I can't. Espe especially Post Malone here. I can't. Nothing against the guy. He he's a wonderful artist. Same with the other. I, I forget the name that she said for her already. But um, you know, nothing against these artists. They're they're good artists. They do a great job. It's just I can't see them as country. I can't. But. I think country's wonderful music. Even a lot of their uh, romance uh, country songs, I think, are wonderful. Um, I just can't see them as country. I, I honestly can't. It, it is weird to see Post Malone with whatever that neck accessory is called. I'm, I'm not country enough to know to know what it's called. So pardon me if if I can't find out what it's called but it is weird for me to see him wearing that and a cowboy hat it is really weird it'd be even weirder if i saw him wearing cowboy boots 
and country is back. It is in vogue. And because it is a trend, you know the Dems are going to get on board. They're trying to straddle country with brat. And this is what it's turned into. Maybe that's how they came up with Kamala's new signature camo hat. Or maybe she just ripped off the idea from Donald Trump. I'm, I'm No, she didn't come up with any sort of camo or anything. She just has a camo hat with her name on it. That's all that is. Identity theft is not a joke, Jim. If only we could see her graphic designer search history. Well, actually, some people can see that. They're internet service providers. Our internet service providers can see all of our search history, which is why I rely on ExpressVPN. When you go online without a VPN, internet service providers or ISPs can see every I'm sorry, single I'm, web I'm, 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 data is also. I'm sorry, Brett Cooper, but I... I don't really care for the sponsor. Nothing against you. Any ISP trackers out there, let me know if Kamala's team was searching MAGA hats. Anyway, Wall Street Journal wrote about this and said the hottest item at the DNC, a camo cap. And then here is her stepdaughter sporting that cap. Look. Why does she look so pissed? Lady, what are you so angry about? Oh my God. Is that, is that an old style camera? Like those cameras you get out of the vending machines? I feel old for seeing that. Is that what that is? Oh, God, that makes me feel old. But why is she so pissed? Why does she look so angry? Lady, why are you so angry? Looks um a lot like the one that Trump sells on the Trump store that I personally have. I actually have ordered two of them. So you personally, I think military camo is better than hunting camo. That's just me personally. But that's because I grew up in a military family, so I have only ever had military camo. So that's I, I think it's better than hunting camo. You can catch me in those this fall. I mean, like I like the woodland design the best. The digital is good, but I, I prefer the woodland design. Can I claim cultural appropriation here? Because it certainly Maybe feels urban too. like they are appropriating country culture. Just letting you know. Somebody commented and said, man, that is so cool. I mean, all I've heard my entire life from these people is that I'm some illiterate white trash moron that couldn't find a pot to piss in without the state's help. But yeah, no, this camo hat will totally make me forget all of that and vote blue. I mean, could not have said it better myself. Also, like I said, the girl in that photo, that is Kamala's stepdaughter, Ella M. Hoff, by the way. I don't think that she smiled once the entire evening. But you know what? Who can... It's the lady. Why? It's like, it's like, seriously, why do you look so pissed? All right. Look, it's just people. Come on. If you want the, if you want the people to vote for you, just, you know, don't do it through merchandise. That's not going to get somebody to vote for you. Nobody can really spend money on anything right now. The shit's too expensive. Find some way to make people's lives better and actually follow through with it. Kamala, you're the fucking VP. You can do shit right now. Don't promise shit. Fucking do it. Blame her when you have to sit through speeches like this. Just listen. In his decision over turning Roe v. Wade, as you heard earlier tonight, the United States Supreme Court majority wrote the following. Quote, women... Are not without electrical, without not allowed. Not I, without I can't, electrical. I can't listen to him. I can't look. I got, I got, I got nothing against. Uh, Joe. Joe, I, I mean, I'm not remembering people's names. I got nothing against Joe. I really don't. I got nothing against him as a person. I don't know how his presidency is going because I don't pay attention to it. I don't fucking care for politics. All it is going to do is either bore me to tears or piss me off. So in order to be stress-free from politics, I just ignore it and I go about my daily life. I just can't really stand to listen to him talk because he's fucking senile. He can't form coherent sentences. This is the thing. Why are we letting people this old run our country? We we need to make sure that people who hit the age of 70 when it comes... Well, first of all, here, in, in the governmental body for politicians, never ever in the over... 
I would say over 200 years, 250 years, maybe. I I don't fucking know. I can't I can't remember how old our country is at the moment. In the in the couple of centuries that America has been formed, it was never um meant for politicians to be career uh, a career. They were never meant to be career politicians. They were meant to be everyday citizens to come in for uh, so many years and then go back out into whatever job they had before. They were never meant to be in pos- in the position of power that they were in for 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years. There are people who are in the Senate and governmental bodies that have been in there for 40 plus years that really should not be in there anymore. Hell, we have people in there who are damn near fucking 90. I think. Term limits and age limit is what we need. For presidency, we already have term limits, so that's fine. But we do need an age limit. If you're of the... if I For me, I think the oldest we should go for presidency is 65 to 70 years old. If you're older than 65 to 70, you know, for how long we, how old we decide, if you're older than what we have put in for an age limit, you are no longer allowed to run for any sort of position of power in the governmental body. You, you should not, because we cannot trust the state of your mind because your mind has deteriorated so much that you're going to end up being like this fucker. Listen to me ranting on about stupid shit. I, I have no idea what I'm talking about. I'm just an idiot doing reaction videos. <laughs> or political power. I mean, listen, that's the best thing that Joe Biden has ever done. Acknowledging the fact that he cannot complete a sentence instantly made him more likable. Like, dude, just admit it. Admit that you're old. Admit that you desperately want to be in a nursing home with your chalky chalky chip. I guarantee Americans would have more empathy for you. But seriously, thank God this man is not running because we seriously cannot risk another four years of blunders like this. I mean, sorry, actually, as a woman, you know, that was riveting. That's what I'm supposed to say. As a woman, that's really gonna make me get out there and vote because they are taking away my electricity. Thank you, Joe Biden. And then to really get the women riled up, Jill came out. And weeks ago, when I saw him dig deep into his soul and decide to no longer seek re-election and endorse Kamala Harris, Hallelujah, Lord have mercy. He is not running anymore. He has decided to let Kamala run for him. Praise the Lord. Oh, fuck off. Look, I got no problem with a woman running for president. I honestly, I'd be interested to actually see a woman as president. I mean, hell, it's nice to see a woman as president in fucking movies and I don't know any TV shows where that's been the case, but, but the thing is we haven't really had good candidacies for a woman president. I am more than happy to let a woman become president. I would love to see it, but we need hell. I would love to see anybody run for president, any, any race, any creed, any religion, any, gender I don't care all for me personally all I want is a competent person who is of sound who's of you know who has all their faculties in order who's not fucking corrupt and bought by the fucking lobbyists and all this other stuff and you know and who actually follows through with all the stuff he says he's gonna do and, you know, not a dick. And actually has some fucking respect and morals. But I don't see us ever getting that. Jill, literally, what are you saying? I mean, the last time I checked, 
the day before Biden's decision to step down, he and his team were still tweeting about winning the election. Literally a month ago to the day, he tweeted something that said, I'm staying in the race. Like he was posting that mere hours before the news broke. The news was so raw and so surprising that even his own team was not made aware of the news until after the world knew that he was stepping down. And the likes of AOC and Nancy Pelosi have admitted that this was basically- Yeah, Nancy Pelosi is another one that needs to get out of fucking politics. She's too old for this shit. The boomer generation needs to get out of the government body because they just, they are so stuck in their generation. They have no idea about anything in the modern, in, in this current era. They just need to leave. Let, let the younger generation, well, you know, Gen X and millennials, you know, start running things a coup. So yes, Jill, by all means, try to rewrite history all you like, but we just watched this history go down like a week ago. And so no, that is clearly not what happened. But go ahead and pretend like it was all Joe's decision and that he's truly saving democracy. Now, of course, there were plenty of other speakers on night one. And of course, they were all focused on Trump. Like I was listening to these speeches, guys. I don't think I learned one thing about the Democratic Party. The only thing I learned is that they all hate Trump and they specifically hate Trump because he's wealthy. Like Michelle Obama got on stage and she was like, folks, I was taught to hate the people that take more than they need. Ma'am, you have like $70 million and you own a $12 million home in Martha's Vineyard and a $10 million home in Hawaii. And your husband was a professor and became the president. I think you have taken more than you need. Also, the Illinois governor, J.B. Pritzker, got on stage and started criticizing Trump for the same thing, saying, you know, he just wants to make the- This, this, we've had such a huge deterioration of both parties. Originally, we were never supposed to have a two-party system, but, you know, here we are with a two-party system that's fucking corrupt as all fuck. But it, it is sad our our two party system is in a very very sad state they they cannot for the life of them come together and come up with a compromise that'll work for both of them and especially work for the people that they are supposed to be taking care of instead every waking moment they try and f you know fling blame at each other like Oh, this party's doing this shit. Blame them. Boo them. Oh, this party's doing that shit. Boo them. They suck. Shut the fuck up. Do your fucking job. Make the country better and make it easier for people to live in. The, the one thing they don't understand, the more... Ex I can go on a whole fucking rant. <laughs> I probably will. <laughs> they, they're, they're just... They tear each other down so fucking much that they think they're doing such a wonderful job. They promise all this stuff and they put their, they, oh, my chair is going down. Fucking chair. I need a new chair. And the other fucked up thing that they do is they keep sending money overseas and they refuse to uh, spend any money on their own fucking people. I, I'm just so upset with our fucking government. They're doing such a shitty job. They they think our economy is just going down the shitter because they keep making things more expensive and harder for people to spend money. They don't seem to understand. If you make it so people are able to spend money, that'll get the economy going. The more expensive you make shit, the more the economy is going to fucking tank because we can't spend money. I don't know how I got to this. <laughs> oh, I've, oh, see this. This is why I don't get into politics and shit because it upsets me for how stupid our fucking government is. Instead of trying to fix the country, make it better for everyone and easier for everyone to live in, they'd rather make. They'd rather go on a pissing contest with each other, saying my dick's bigger. Saying, "Hey, I could piss farther than you." They'd rather do that than take care of the con than take care of the people that they that they are supposed to take care of. 
The government is supposed to be made of the people, by the people, for the people. Now it just feels like it's made of the rich, by the rich, for the rich. And fuck everybody else in the middle and lower class. We would be such a better fucking country if our government stopped for one second to realize that, hey, maybe fighting with each other is not the best way to go about taking care of our country and making us better. Maybe we should compromise and find a middle ground where we can all work together and make this the greatest country in the fucking world, bar none. And most of the times we are a, we are a fucking laughing stock to the rest of the world. Things easier for his rich buddies. Bruh. Trump has a net worth of 4.3 billion, I think. The Illinois governor has a net worth of 3.5 billion dollars. Like the lack of self-awareness is deafening. Seriously, like you cannot just get a bunch of camo hats and some country singers and try to repaint yourselves as the party of the people and the working class when this is who is representing you. Like Donald Trump, who is richer than all of you, does a better job of reaching those people because he treats them like normal human beings. He has not spent the last 12 years saying that they are illiterate morons and backwards. And that is why your voter base abandoned you. Now. Moving on, because aside from all the ridiculous speeches and the appearances, it was the vendors set up outside of the DNC that really caught my attention. Like this one, a giant inflatable IUD that I'm sorry, but the inf giant inflatable IUD, while some people may find it inappropriate, I find it fucking hilarious. Set up in Chicago, here you can see that now, and again, like... <laughs> Absurd. Literally no reason for this whatsoever. Like, do you genuinely believe that Trump is going to go after birth control? Like, he is not. What people have to realize is that Trump is actually the moderate candidate here, much to the disdain of many conservatives who are even saying that they won't vote for him because he is more moderate. Like, I guarantee this man has no desire to take your IUDs, although it would probably do you good because they are terrible. So just keep that in mind. Anyway, in a similar... The, the thing is, all forms of birth control do have a negative side. So, you know, take everything with a grain of salt. The shot, the ring, uh, the 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 tea thing, whatever the fuck that thing's called. Birth control pills. <clears throat> Just, you know, any form of birth control is a double-edged sword. And not all of them, actually all of them are not a 100% guarantee. And not all of them will always work. So, you know, take everything with a grain of salt when it comes to birth control, but, you know, actually be careful. Even though you take birth control, you can like, you know, you can still get pregnant. So, you know, just take care of yourself and be careful out there with everything vain. They have all convinced themselves that Trump is going to enact a federal abortion ban, even though he has literally said multiple times that he has no intention of doing that. And so they're rebelling to make themselves feel good and to paint themselves as the victim. And Democratic activists, <coughs> Planned Parenthood, set up a mobile health clinic right outside of the DNC to provide free vasectomies and medication abortion. And guess what, guys? It's located at the Wiener Circle. I have no idea what the Wiener Circle is, but that's hilarious poetic isn't it this is from planned parenthood great rivers here we come chicago our mobile health clinic will be in the west loop with the chicago abortion fund and the wiener circle on august 19th through 20 what the fuck is the wiener circle 20th providing free vasectomies and medication abortions wow nothing like halting the creation of life and murdering babies to really celebrate the demo okay all right look i'm gonna give my opinion on abortion not everybody will probably agree with me, which I understand. Now, if we are factually speaking, yes, abortion is the taking of a life. Now, where not everybody seems to agree is on is at what point during the pregnancy is it considered a life form? That is where a lot of people don't really agree on. I don't really know because I don't understand it. I am not that much into biology. It is not my area of expertise. So I don't know. My opinion on abortion is that it should be legal 
up to a certain point. After a certain number of weeks of you being pregnant, I don't, I think it's what, 16, 18 weeks? After that certain point, you should no longer be able to do it because it is an actual fully, it isn't not fully formed, but it, it is to the point where it would be actually considered probably legitimate murder. But here's the thing. I think women should have access to abortion. Like I said, up to a certain point. Now, if the woman has been sexually assaulted, it, it you know, penetration. I can't really say it on here because it'll, I'll probably get in trouble. Um, incest, for you know, forced, any sort of that thing where it is against their will or incest, um, then yes, give them full access to it. I'd say right away and, you know, get the perpetrator as well and put them in jail. Now here, here's the other side of it as well. If you are with somebody and you both are consensually having sex and you end up getting pregnant, she should still have the decision to get an abortion. However, she should have the wherewithal and the respect for her partner to at least talk to him and respect him enough to um, get his, uh, I'd say, opinion on it or whatever. See if he wants to uh, keep the baby or not. Because at least at that point, you have shown him respect enough to actually want to talk to him and get his opinion on everything. Now, after you do all that, if you still want to get the abortion, that's fine. It's your it's your body. You can decide to do what you want with it. it yes, you will. But at least it show, it, it, you've shown the guy enough respect to actually want to involve him in it. That's my opinion when it comes to abortion. You, if, if it's consensual sex and you end up getting pregnant by accident, even if you've used birth control, uh, then you should at least have enough respect for your partner to involve him in the decision. Now, if it's a one night stand, that's different. But if you like, if you're dating the person, fiance, um, married, uh, a spouse then you should at least respect your partner enough to involve him in the decision making. Now, I know I'm repeating myself, but like I said, even after you've involved him in the decision making, you still decide to have an abortion. That's fine. You've at least shown enough respect to him that you've decided to have him in the decision making. And I think he will respect that more if you just go behind his back and say, fuck you, I'm getting the abortion anyways. That's my whole opinion on it. They should have access to it, but I've said everything I need to. Democratic Party. And here are some of the staff celebrating that. Our pussy our choice. I just don't even know what to say at huh? this point. I don't care. Nobody cares about your uh, more than you do. Just saying, just putting it out there. So demure, so classy. One woman commented and said, I keep seeing this demure thing. What the fuck is that going on? What what, what the hell is this demure thing going on about? I, it's like some celebrity that coined it or something. It's weird and very culty to be so obsessed with anti-reproduction. Literally no other species hates itself like this precisely. And I don't think we talk about that enough. Like we talk about self-hatred a lot when it comes to race. We don't talk about it when it comes to abortion. Like why are people so obsessed with never reproducing. But we can talk about that at a later date because it is almost as fast. Yeah, it, it is fine if you don't want to reproduce. If you still want to have sex and you don't want to reproduce, that is fine. It's your choice. Go about your life however you want as long as you don't hurt, excuse me, as long as you don't hurt others along the way. That's fine. The thing I find stupid is, is those same people who ridicule and put down others because they choose to have I, they choose to reproduce and they say, and they, these people, these anti-reproduction people go about attacking these people who choose to reproduce. Why 
are are you such a smooth brain dumb fuck that you just are so full of hate and vitriol that you have to ruin other people's lives. Just stay in your lane. If you're happy with not reproducing, all the power to you. Don't put down others because they choose to reproduce. Because, you know, maybe it's good It's good you don't want to reproduce. We don't need a smooth brain dumbass reproducing and bringing more smooth brain dumbasses into the world. Fascinating as the queer LGBTQ feminist protests currently in the streets of Chicago to make their allegiance to Hamas led Palestine heard loud and clear by the Democrats. Again, queers for Palestine. This joke has been made countless times at this point, but if you knew world history or anything about international affairs or Palestinian law, you. Uh, hey Siri, what's the definition of queer? Yeah, I mean, it, you know, when I was a kid growing up, queer just meant gay. It was just another word for gay. When the fuck did queer not mean gay? Doesn't queer still mean gay? Just another word for gay? Why, why are people making shit up for words that exist that already have a definition to it? Am I missing some? Just somebody in the comments tell me. What the fuck does queer mean for people now? Because as far as I'm aware, since I've grown up, queer just meant gay. It was sometimes used as an insult. But it's... I don't... Ugh. Who would know how stupid and ironic this is? Nevertheless, here's one ally that I saw on TikTok and it was just too perfect not to share. Urgent message for anyone on TikTok who's heading to protests at the DNC. Um, there was a citizen march, a citizen protest happening, followed by a ton of police officers, including police driving like plain unmarked vehicles. I respect you so much for being there. Please be safe. Please look out for each other. If you're going, uh, I remember 2020, okay? I was there. Do you remember the mostly peaceful protest? Do you remember the buildings burning? Nothing to see here, please. <laughs> I love Frank Drummond. Such a great character. Such a great movie. This the stores being looted, the people being killed. Is that what you remember? Or do you remember the police trying to stop all of that? Because I'm kind of confused at this point, but I do see that you are... Here's here's the thing about the police. On the whole, excuse the pun, in general, police are a good thing. The only reason why we see police in such a bad light is because the majority of the videos for policemen out there, at least that I've seen, are bad policemen, which are a very small percentage of the police force, believe it or not, the amount of bad policemen out there are a very, very small percentage of them. Most of them are just trying to get through the day without being shot. Just trying to do their job so they can have a home to come to. Some of them have a family to come back home to. So a lot of them are so scared and so worried that they're not going to come home that day that they go out to do their job. Because some dumbass decided to pull a gun. And there, there are some, it, it's just, despite what people think, we do need police officers. Because if we didn't have police officers, you have no idea the amount of crime and anarchy we would have. It is because of police officers and other law enforcers that we don't have as much, that we don't have more crime than we do now. It's just there are so many videos out there that have painted policemen in such a bad light that people think that all policemen should just go away and get defunded, which is just a moronic 
thought and moronic way of thinking. Literally crying about law enforcement doing their job to keep people like you, residents of Chicago, safe. I mean, all I can say is that Chicago... <laughs> yeah, Chicago. I think if I'm not... If I remember correctly, Chicago is the murder capital of the United States. Chicago police officers probably deserve a raise after what's going on this week because it hasn't just been queers for Palestine. There have been multiple protests like coming together. Like there's been pro-abortion people that are protesting outside the DNC. Like, were you guys not at the RNC? Like, aren't you supposed to be protesting us? Like, I'm very confused, but there's like multiple protests coming together. They don't even know what they're protesting, which is so funny to me. Now, of course. Yeah, see, this is another thing when it comes to protest. Nobody does the research. Only the people, may, there's very few people in these protests actually know what they're protesting. The majority of them are just bandwagon hoppers. They're just hopping on the bandwagon without knowing what the fuck is going on. If you're going to protest, for one, don't get in people's way. Don't disrupt other people's lives. That is a good way to make people ignore you. And not want to go for your cause. And just don't destroy property. You Those oil protesters are fucking idiots. If you're going to protest, protest peacefully. And know what the fuck you're talking about. And do your fucking research. Of course, guys, I cannot finish any political recap without some thoughts from my favorite, Link Loren, who just summarizes everything better than anybody else does in media, in my opinion. So not only was Joe Biden pushed out of the race, he was also pushed out of prime time last night. He didn't take the stage till almost 11.30 p.m. This is a guy who Which has said he does his best work between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. Because he's geriatric. As for the speech itself, it was actually okay. You know, the bar is in the seventh ring of hell. It's so low, but Joe Biden, he did all right. <laughs> now, Kamala Harris and Tim Walls, they sat there as the face of joy and joyfulness, waiting for this to be over. They're like, we've got reservations at Gibson's. Joe, hurry it on up and then go on vacation. Hillary Clinton also appeared last night to give the same oh, speech she's given. For Keep Hillary Clinton away, that evil fucking woman. She's like the, f I think she almost looks like the female version of, um, the Supreme Chancellor. Uh, I forget his fucking name, but you know, the Supreme Chancellor, Darth Sidious, that's who she fucking looks like. <laughs> For almost 10 years, she talked about the glass ceiling and shattering the glass ceiling and putting some cracks in the glass ceiling. Hillary, you didn't lose in 2016 because you're a woman. America was ready for a woman. They just weren't ready for this woman. Also, it's important to note that Vogue said- oh, that We weren't ready for that woman. We didn't want that woman. We're ready for a woman president. We just want a competent woman president who knows what the fuck she's doing. This outfit was a can't miss look. Her moo moo? Her linen, I don't even know what fabric that is, but like, it's its a Hillary pantsuit. Are we done with pretending that she has any sort of fashion? No, let's move on. All the speakers last night talked about how Kamala Harris was gonna fight for family values. There are Planned Parenthood buses in the parking lot giving out free abortions and vasectomies, and y'all say she's gonna uplift and promote families. I'm not buying it. Also, she only started doing that when she saw that it was working for Trump. We need to bring back the nuclear family. That's what we need to do. And family values as well. There you go. Nancy's that friend who stabs you in the back, sleeps with your boyfriend, steals your wallet, then shows up to your birthday party like, oh, is there an open bar? How are you doing, doll? You gotta give it up to Nancy Pelosi. She's so the good. Regina George of Washington, D.C. She sat in the crowd holding up a We Heart Joe sign. After enacting a coup against him, they still haven't spoken in weeks. It's just wild. Again, all of this is so poetic. I say this literally every episode at this point, but guys, I am like knee deep into Veep right now. This is even more insane than Veep. And Veep was supposed to be outlandish the fuck and is comical. Veep? And then I look at our actual government and I'm like, oh no, you guys are actually the crazy ones. It's like Veep could have taken it a full step further and they probably wouldn't have matched the levels of insanity that we're facing today. But as always, go check Link out. He has great coverage. I'm such a fan. Now, the only thing that's saving the DNC for me right now is the fact that Matt Walsh is there. He's wearing his Am I Racist getup. He has infiltrated the DNC and is furthering his journey of dismantling his whiteness and becoming anti-racist. And for that, I am just so happy. And you know, guys, oh, I know that to get guy. him kicked out <laughs> of the DNC floor, which is so not inclusive because this is a man that is just trying to be a better anti-racist ally and they don't want him there. And yet he perseveres because he is coming back today. He's just so brave. And CNN was lucky to have him on air. I can't wait to see the footage that he gets. <laughs> 
Hey guys, Brett here. <laughs> I like how he just shows up in there. That's funny. Well, that was Brett Cooper's This Is Madness video. I hope you all enjoyed that. I would love to hear your opinions on all this in the comments below, so please let me know what you think. And I know I've been a blabbing, blabbering idiot on this. I don't know anything about politics. I know nothing. I'm just rambling on about stupid shit. If you agree with me, great. If you don't, eh, that's fine. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, make sure to subscribe for more. I post three days a week. I hope you all have a wonderful day and I will see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.